Hi, I'm Jill Rupp from June Taylor. Are you ever cooking in your kitchen and always searching for a towel? Well, now you can easily find them because they can be wrapped around your neck with June Taylor's new handy towel cowl. Each kit comes with enough towel material to add two ends like this to a wrap-around sew-as-you-go patterned scarf piece. All you need to do is add your own fabric and you'll be set to throw that apron away and use your handy towel cowl. Each handy towel cowl kit contains enough 100% cotton waffle weave fabric to put two towels, one at each end of your cowl, and then this 100% cotton pre-printed scarf material. This is very cool because this is going to go around your neck and the lines are pre-printed so you can sew as you go. It's very easy. You'll also need 16 pre-cut 2.5 by 9 inch strips. If you're a quilter, this is a great project for jelly rolls, or can, you can just pull the strips out of your stash. If you'd like to add a little accent to maybe match your kitchen on your towel cowl, you can use a little extra fabric to decorate the ends like we've done here. This is a completely different colorway as you see here. It's very bright and springy, and again, we used a piece of the fabric to match this. So let me show you how to put a handy towel cowl together. We'll now cut our fabrics. We need 16 assorted fabrics, 9 inches by 2 and a half inches to make the basic front of the scarf. And then we need one piece 4 and a half inches wide by 42 long, like this piece here, for the lining or the back of the scarf. And then for these tabs, we're going to need two pieces 4 and a half by 9, so that'll look like this. And then if you like to put some decorative fabric on the edge of your towel, you'll need two uh, pieces, two inches by 22 and a half inches. You can also use grow grain ribbon, or you don't have to put anything at all there if you don't want to. After you've cut your 16 assorted nine inch by two and a half inch strips, you can stack up two at a time to do this angle cutting, but you're gonna wanna make sure right sides are both facing up. So when you stack them together, make sure both right sides are facing up. The strip then goes on the 45 degree line of your mat like this. And you just want to make sure that the top corner is on a vertical line coming down. So strip on the, on the, on the angle line and corner on a vertical line coming down. We'll take our ruler and we're going to cut that first angle like this and then just bring your ruler on down to this bottom corner right here and all you've got to do is make sure that the lines on your ruler and the lines on your cutting mat vertical and horizontal are matched up and then cut again and that is exactly how you get the perfect strip sizes that you need to make the base of the scarf and now you're ready to sew your solid lines on the scarf are always your placement lines. With your fabric right side up, put piece one into position. Take piece two right sides together, place it against piece one, matching up the corner of piece two with the notch marking that you see on the fabric. This looks a little unusual, but it is correct. Now you're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, flip it open and press and I have got that done here on the next step. So here was my uh, piece one, and here is piece two, and flipped open. Piece three, right sides together. We're get, going to line up the point with the drawing, like this, sew in a quarter inch, and that's gonna flip open to look like this, and I have that done here as well. So here's our piece three, and we can press that. Piece number four, we're going to take right sides together with the point matching the point on the drawing. So, and that's going to flip open like this. And piece five, right sides together, matching up our point down on the bottom and sew that in a quarter inch. Our angled pieces have all been put in, sewn in place. Now we're going to take piece 17, which is our 42 inch strip, right sides together and you can use all of your lines here, your marking lines, marked lines as your placement lines. And once this piece is down, you are going to sew in a quarter of an inch. 
all the way down on your 42 inch strip. When that is completed, this is what your scarf will look like. Now notice that there's a little extra of the white material sticking out and that's purposeful because that way we won't have such a large seam around your neck once we're completing our construction. Now what you're going to do is you are going to trim your scarf out using these corner marking lines. You're going to trim all the way up here and then you're going to trim on the dotted line, top and bottom, and again trim the last section using the corner mark. This is what your scarf looks like sewn and trimmed up at this point and remember there should be about a quarter of an inch hanging out on each of the long sides. Next we're going to take the material that we're using for the tab, in this case our popsicles, and we're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together like this, and press it. And then we'll pin that in place as we've done here, and we're going to sew that in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We've done that down here, so that's what this looks like. So here's my quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to flip that open and press. After that, we're going to put right sides together and we're going to now switch to a one half inch seam allowance and we're going to sew all the way down the long edge of the scarf. So essentially we're creating a tube. And I've got that done here where we've done our sewing and we've turned right sides out and now this end is open and the other end is open like this. Next we're going to prepare our towel material. When the towel material comes out of the package, the first thing you're going to want to do is zigzag all around both raw edges of this towel material. Put it in the washer and the dryer. It is imperative that it's washed and dried before you finish constructing it because it shrinks a good deal and it also puffs up and we want it to be pre-shrunk and nice and soft and puffy before you sew it into your towel cowl. And you can tell the difference. This is before you wash it, this is after you've washed it and dried it. When your toweling material comes out of the dryer, you're going to cut it into two pieces, 15 inches by about 22 inches. And on one of the edges, you're going to hem the bottom. We fold it under and fold it under again and pressed about a half inch. Then the next thing you're going to do is if you want to use a fabric piece for a decorative strip, use your two inch strip and we just fold the edges under and press, which looks like this. And you're going to place this about an inch and three quarters from that bottom hemmed edge. And then just go ahead and top stitch this fabric on. And that will look like this when it's finished off. So now your towel has your beautiful decorative strip attached to it. Do that on the second towel as well. Our decorative border is in place. We now flip it over to the back and we're going to hem the two sides. A half inch fold over, a half inch again, and stitch along the edge on both sides. So now our bottom and two sides are hemmed. Then we're going to accordion fold our material toward the center and press. So let's do that. And press. I pin it like this so that I make sure that it will fit inside my casing. And once I know that it'll fit in there, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just run a stitching line across the top to hold that pleating in place. When the stitching line is in, I can then insert it into the end of my cowl and make a quarter inch seam line here. I usually push the towel, all, towel material all the way up to this seam line and then sew the decorative stitch down here right on the edge. And we've done that here as you can see. So our towel material is actually up here and our stitching is along here and now our beautiful towel cowl is complete. Keep your towels handy in the kitchen with the new towel cowl kit. These are great to give as gifts, wonderful for teacher gifts or perhaps a bridal shower and they're great to have one for yourself that matches your kitchen. We hope you enjoy making this fun and easy project.